So friends, today we have this wonderful Cafecito Virtual with some good guests from NC uh, North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University. Um, and we also have some students, Manuela, Ana, um, Christina, and Samuel, and then my colleague Juana Hernandez. So how are you guys doing today? Hello, good, how are you? Good, good, welcome to this Cafecito Virtual in English. Yes. It's always exciting when we can do this. Um, and really the, the purpose of today's Cafecito Virtual is to learn more about um, NCA and T State University, uh, to learn about what it, what it is, um, to learn about each of your stories, and then have a cafecito uh, surrounded that experiences, okay? So um, to begin this cafecito, let's talk about, um, let's introduce yourselves. Introduce yourselves, tell us what, um, what major, if you're a student, Manuela, for you, tell us what you do, and then um, tell us one thing that attracted you to um, that university that you just wanted to, to just tell us one thing that you thought it was really interesting about it. Um, so we'll start with you, Manuela. Okay, thank you. So um, my name is Manuela Sanchez and I am the Assistant Director for the Multicultural Student Center. Uh, I've been with the university for about nine years now. I started off as the coordinator for a program called the Scholars Latino Initiative, which uh, our lovely students that you see here are part of that program. They are mentors from that program. Uh, basically, that program is a program to help Latino uh, high school students uh, get college access by kind of mentoring them and just guiding them on what they need to focus on and uh, things that they need to be aware of to to get into that whole college process and so yeah so that's me so right now I'm currently the assistant director for the multicultural students and I really enjoy working there because I love the fact of being able to um, work with diverse communities within our college and just kind of bring that focus of how we are intentional within our university being a historically black university about still being diverse even though uh, it is a, a historically black university HBCU we are still very intentional about being diverse and bringing other cultures and other type of groups uh, to our university. Thank you Manuela. Mm -hmm. We can start with uh, one of the students. We have Anna, Sam, and Christina. So any, you're welcome to go ahead to share. Tell us about you. How about Sam? Let's go alphabetically. <laughs> go ahead, Sam. Okay. Um, so my name is Sam. I am a senior computer science student at the institution and what else did you want to know? I'm sorry. No, you're good. So tell us, um, tell us one thing that you thought it was really interesting about your school. Um, yeah, that's, that's quite a vague question so what, for me. What, why, why did things. you decide to go to A&T? Well, they do have a good engineering program, which was what I was looking to go into. Um, it was either that or NC State, but I really did not want to go to NC State, so um, I decided to go to A&T, and it was actually like a really good, it's a really good experience, so. Okay, we'll ask you more about that experience, but that's perfect. All right, how about Christina? Do you want to go next? Yeah. Hi, my name is Christina, and I'm a rising senior. I'm currently an animal science pre-vet student. And I think the one thing that made me really want to go to a and I actually did several tours. I did tours at NC State. I did tours at the University of Georgia. I'm from Jersey, so I knew that I wanted to go somewhere warm. But what made me want to choose, like, going to an HBCU was because the difference in atmosphere that I noticed was very different from doing a personal tour with, the, with a predominantly white school 
versus the HBCU. Like when I when I went to A&T and I did the tour, I'm a senior in high school, it's April. I'm like narrowing down where I want to go. And when I get there, one of the things that really separated uh, them, A&T from NC State, from University of Georgia, University of Florida, they said, we are here to help you. We want to see you do better. We want to see you thrive and we want to see you reach for the stars and we are gonna be there every step of the way. And that was something that I noticed, the very family environment at a and that I didn't get from NC State. I actually walked out on the tour so angry. This is before I even toured a and I walked out of that tour so angry. I was like, I do not like this school. I'm still gonna apply in here, but I was like, I do not like this. This environment is not for me. Like, it wasn't welcoming. They, they were talking about if we see all students get A's on their exams, the professors were saying we're going to make the exams harder. And they, they just made it seem like we were more of a number instead of, you know, like college students wanting to do better and, you know, you know just wanting to strive for better. So I just liked how A&T was like, no, we're going to help you. And through my experiences, they definitely kept that word. All right. That's really good information. Um, and I'm so glad that you were able to think about it in those terms um, because everybody's so unique and we think differently. So I'm glad that, and we'll, ch we'll, ta we'll chat more about that experience. And, and you, you said a few things there that I think that we can really um, learn more from you. So thank you. Um, Anna, how about you? Um, my name is Anna Barbara Garcia. Um, I'm a rising senior also. Um, I'm studying international management. And one thing that stuck me most about the school would have to be the history behind it. Perfect. So that that lead us to our last person in the cafecito, my colleague and friend Juana Hernandez Urquiza. Hola, hello. Um, Juana Hernandez Urquiza. Este, I'm one of the, um, see my Spanish is coming out when I'm talking. <laughs> I'm one of the CFNC State Representatives for Spanish Services, along with my colleague, Dr. Juanes Ramirez. Um, and so I want to thank you all for being part of this cafecito. And uh, Manuela, you were um, is the, talking a little bit about um, HBCU and, and, and alluded a little bit to what, what an HBCU is. But can you help us understand a little bit um, better what is an HBCU? And um, also, Ana Barbara did mention the history. So if you all can just kind of um, talk a little bit about what is an HBCU and maybe um, why it's so unique to other institutions. Right, so an HBCU is, stands for a historically black uh, university, which I think it was back in 1964 or 63, 64, I think. It was when they were first established. And so, um, and they are nationally accredited universities that began during that time to seek, when there was segregation, uh, to seek uh, the uh, education of uh, African American students. Um, but, you know, as time progressed, um, segregation was abolished and they continue to be historically black universities just because of the rich culture that they have. I think currently in our state, um, there is, I think 12 HBCUs in our state. I think we are the ones that hold the most <laughs> within the whole, um, within the whole, um, the whole country. I think I'm, I might, yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure. Um, and, um, a and is located in Greensboro. Now, in our proximity, we have two other HBCUs that are nearby, which uh, Bennett College is one, which is an all-female college. And then, um, then the other one is Winston, Winston-Salem, Winston-Salem State. So, yeah, I think, um, guys, if you want to chime in a little bit more about HBCUs, maybe, <laughs> our students. And so um, I would like to touch upon the history, like I would definitely say history was another part for me on why I wanted to go because when the school was founded, there was so much adversity and resilience that these people had to face just to get an education. Correct. And I feel as though 
the work ethic and the mentality is much more different because of you know the struggles and everything and all the adversity that was faced you know people do want more people do want to better themselves and you can see that through the history you know greensboro four that's in textbooks that's written all in history and we have that statue like on our campus which is amazing and that's definite that's definitely a huge factor Yeah, thank you uh, so much for uh, sharing a little bit about uh, just helping us understand what is an HBCU um, and then uh, talking about the history. And I love that um, Christina talked about that and that, that feeling of like, she felt like she was like home, right? It felt like a family. She felt that connection when she went to visit the, the institution. And I think that um, there's just, um, it's, HBCUs can be a very unique um, home or, or, or space for, for a lot of students, a lot of Latinx students. So thank you so much for sharing your experiences. So let me tap a little bit into what Christina mentioned about that family feeling on campus. Because also we are not that large of an institution. So you do get that vibe of, you know, you, you get to know a lot of people and then, uh, for me also as staff of the university that's kind of I, I felt the same thing that warmth that um kind of a little bit like relatable as being a latina you know how we're very warm and kind of like hey and all that i, I feel it's the same within our cultures that you can feel that same uh feeling and so that's one of the things that i like too about um, that warmth and that family, like you're working with family and that, um, that people are there to help you. Uh, I know that, you know, sometimes it's with all, within all jobs. It's like sometimes you get some people you don't get along with and that's fine. But for the most part, I feel that most of the staff and professors uh, do care about the students and try to help them uh, as much as possible. And, uh, and I know that within... For example, within the division I work with, the Division of Student Affairs, uh, we try to do our best to try to help students uh, have a positive experience. Some people don't, may not realize that, um, that your school is one of the, the top producers of engineers of color in the country. And so it serves a very important purpose um, and it, it serves, and it's also one of the largest HBCUs. I think the, the other one that is kind of your size is in Florida. So I think you guys are up there in terms of the, the largest. Um, so I want to bring back together something that you guys mentioned, all of you mentioned this, but is that intersection between Latino, Hispanic, and being in a predominantly historically Black institution. And I want to talk about your experiences, Anna, Sam, and Christina, being a Latino and navigating some of that space. Because um, we, we do have in our culture some people that are more familiar with historical Black institutions, and we do have those um, those families that are not familiar with historical Black institutions. So what I want to do is first, Talk to me about your parents um, in this process. How, um, you know, with Christina, how did you talk about this uh, going to a school in North Carolina with your parents? Was it um, a, a process that was easy? What do you wish other parents knew about that? And then the same thing goes for Anna and Sam. I'm going to mm -hmm. ask you what you wish your parents would have known about this. Um, school. Absolutely. So it definitely wasn't an easy process because I'm 10 hours away. I don't have friends or family in North Carolina. So it was definitely a big leap. And on top of that, it was an HBCU. So when I had very first told my parents, you know, like this school and everything, but I said, this is an HBCU and they didn't know what an HBCU was. See, my school, my high school, they were doing HBCU tours and stuff like that. People could sign up for that. And so they educated, like, a lot of us on that. So some high schools don't even have that privilege to be educated on HBCUs. 
So when I had told them about it, they definitely were, they were worried just because they weren't sure, you know, because up north and south, regardless of whatever, like race or ethnicity you are, it's definitely different. The vibes, culture, everything. So you're going, I'm going from Jersey, you know, very diverse. And then I go down South, not so diverse. So I had, I had taken that into consideration, you know, and you can see that NC State was not diverse at all. And I knew com from coming such a diverse background, I mean, I'm sitting in class with Filipinos, people from Pakistan, Peruvians, Portuguese, Brazil, like any country you can think of, I had friends from there. So. I would say, you know, it was definitely a sit down talk that I had to have with my parents, like going into, you know, going in further into it because I had made up my mind, okay, I want to go to a and but I need to do a tour first. I can't go, I can't ex like apply and not do a tour and, you know, cause I could love it online and then in person. So I loved NC State online. I loved Georgia online. And then when I went, it was completely different. So I would say with my experience, you know, talking to them and just giving them that, because they were like, you know, Northern kids were raised a lot different from Southern kids. And that's, you know, I want to give you guys a real, like, authentic of my experience, because it is, it is very true. And even, like, even, like, a Latino from up North and a Latino from down South, too, is still different. They grew up in a different environment. So, I would definitely say, like, when I, you know, after, like, talking to them and I say, you know, like, I, I, I think I'm going to be okay down there. Like, everything's going to be fine. They were worried because, you know, you are going to stick out. You're going to stick out like a sore thumb. It's predominantly black school. So, you know, you, you look, when we look Latino, so they're going to be okay. You know, so they were just worried, like, are, are, would you get bullied? Like, they were worrying about things like that. And, you know, I said, I think, like, I, I really assured them. I said, you know, I'm going just, like, for school down there and, like, you know, I, I really think that I can do this and I think this school is for me. And, you know, so they did have like they had the reservations just because that like for my safety and just because I'm going so far away. So regardless of whatever school I went to, they were gonna have reservations. And, you know, so when I came to AIN, so when we did the tour, me and my mother came down here and even my mom, she was blown away. She didn't even like Georgia at all because of when we met with the deans, we met with professors, we went around the school and they weren't welcoming. They didn't have that family, like that family atmosphere that I was talking about. And when I came to a &T, they were just so, they were waiting for you at the door, greeting you with bags and they sat us down and they really took the time they, to really like know everybody in the room and their audience and you know they were showing us pictures and then we went around and going around with history but with my you said you wanted to know my experience as well like going into a &T. yeah you go ahead and, and tell us about that okay I so honestly it is the best thing that has ever happened to me and I'm so glad that I chose a &T. And I didn't stay home, you know, in Jersey, I could have went to a community college and, you know, something small, save money, but it was worth, it was worth every dollar because the people, I talk about it all the time, like the people that I have met are impeccable. Like not only like are the students and like the people that I'm around, like around my age, but I'm talking about the professors. The professors really care about you and they want to see you succeed. Now, no matter where you go, you're always going to have a professor or two, you know, that's, that's just life. But majority of every, every, every professor, like really takes their time out. Like if you, you know, let's say like I've had, I've had several bad days where like there was one time where I actually had to go home and handle something and I had to miss class. So I had took my professor in that side and I said, look, like I need to go handle something back home. Like, you know, things aren't going well, like, I really need to take this bus home, and, you know, she could have easily said, I don't care, like, I'm gonna give you F, like, you know what I mean, because I'm missing class, and stuff like that, but she was like, you know what, she was like, send me a picture, like, of the, of the bus ticket, and, like, you know, I'll, I'll give you all the makeup work, no problem, and, like, she gave me, she actually gave me full credit for that day, 
So I'm actually, I want to talk about my experience because I currently am going, I'm a transfer student right now this summer at Rutgers, and that's a PWI. a and summer classes got filled up, so I couldn't, unfortunately, take the classes that I needed. So I was like, okay, so let me just take classes at Rutgers, and that's New Jersey State School. So I had technical difficulties last night. This actually just happened. And on the syllabus at Rutgers, it states that if, like, if you have technical difficulties, that's your fault. And basically, you can't make it up. Like, we don't care if you have technical difficulties. Now, at A&T, any professor, if you let them know, like, hey, I had technical difficulties, you shoot them an email. And the professor even sent out an announcement to us that I have an overwhelming amount of emails. So with that being said, I will no longer, I will no longer answer any emails for the rest of the semester. And we have a 24 at seven system that you guys can go to for customer support. And like, I can, and it was just like, you know what, like coming here, I'm like, wow, like this is exactly why I knew a t was for me because I'm only taking classes at Rutgers just because a t was full for this summer. But the difference, you can, you can feel that. I can't just shoot him an email because he already, he said he made it clear. He doesn't care if you have technical difficulties, you're on your own. And that's very insensitive because right now we're, everybody's going through things during the pandemic, everyone. So the experience at A&T where the professors are there for you, my, my own boss, I work on campus. She drove me to the hospital. Like she came with me, she stayed hours and this is my boss. She didn't have to do that. Like they really care about you and the relationships that you will build and the people that you will meet. Cause you're meeting people from, everywhere all of Alabama you got people from Atlanta everyone all very it's just very diverse and it's it's good to diversify yourself because you're gonna you're gonna start to learn a lot and and you know become more familiar with different cultures which I was I thought that was definitely a humbling experience for me too because you know I I, with, I I was so diverse coming from my school in Jersey and then I come down I was like yeah I don't know nothing but it ended it really ended up being I I swear by this it really ended up being the best like best experience of my life like I will not forget these three years my upcoming fourth years it's been it's been a great experience I'm glad you mentioned about the tour and how important that is because I feel like a lot of people don't realize what you see on paper is really different from what you actually experience uh, face to face. So I'm glad I'm glad you're mentioning to give it give it a shot to something that you didn't think it was necessarily what you think or no. whether or not you you thought that's where you wanted to go because that's that's a great strategy in order to to select yeah. colleges. And I'm so glad you had. Um, that experience with um with an hbcu because really i think that that's part of the the conversation here we're trying to show the students and families uh, a different mm -hmm. alternative it might not be for everybody but it, it might be a great option for some students it is. do you Don't, have afro yeah. latino mm -hmm. are you do you have any afro descendants or anything like that um by by any chance i'm just asking without knowing um you said like afro latina uh-huh I would say indigenous. So my father, like his roots, um, he was born in El Salvador and like most of like his ancestors and stuff are actually like Mayan. Mm -hmm. So it's more indigenous Latino, yeah. And we'll talk about the the, the cultural piece in a moment. Um, let's hear from from Anna and, and Sam about their journeys and their stories. Thank you, Cristina. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll go. Um... So the trend for, for, well, going back really far, you know, the transition from middle school to high school can be somewhat overwhelming because those people you thought you knew well in middle school, it turns out like, you know, everybody goes their different ways and basically you feel alone. And so once you start getting used to high school, then comes that transition to college and you expect it to be the same thing. Uh, for my case, I went to a community college and during high school, they didn't really teach you anything about uh, PWIs uh, or HBCUs, so I didn't really know anything about those or the difference at the time. Um, so 
once I got to my community college, it was like the same thing. I figured that once I transfer, it's going to be a really big transition for me. And at that point, I figured out the difference and knew more about HBCUs and PWIs. And so when at the time I was not really open to getting to know people, I was a bit more shy at back then. It was at the point, it was to the point where my dad would uh, actually tell me like, when would I go out to hang out with friends? Like he would try to urge me to go out and I didn't want to, I would rather stay home. So when I transferred to a and it, it all started the same. And like for the first few weeks I was a, you know, not, I didn't know what to do. I was, I only had one person I knew there, which was my cousin, but we didn't really see each other that often. And so then I heard of this event was a Latinx meet and greet, and, which was run by the Multicultural Student Center. So I was curious because at the time, at all these school, other schools, such as uh, my community college, and when I went to a tour at NC State, it was pretty much a majority of Asians and Caucasians. It was, uh, I barely saw any Hispanics, so I didn't feel like I would fit in there, for example. Um, mm -hmm. So when I went to that Latinx meet and greet at a and I saw there were more Hispanics than, I, than what I saw in those first few weeks. And eventually, like, as I kept going to a and I kind of started to open up more. I started getting to know more people. Uh, I started going to the Multicultural Student Center more, and I got to meet more people. And basically, it pretty much opened to different parts of myself that I never really knew I had social mental and physical like i figured out i really love exercising at like by going to the gym a lot at the school and like i said meeting the people there such as meeting uh miss sanchez and uh my boss my boss with along with christina uh, miss hermine you know those two are very supportive and they're like uh my mothers when i'm not at home so they're like my mothers when i'm at greensboro and so yeah so like to those who, this is just a message to those who don't, who feel like, you know, they're shy introverts, really. Um, once you go to college, you'll, be, you'll pretty much find your people and where you fit in. Uh, Sam, do you have any um, difficulties um, expressing to your parents that you wanted to go to um, a and University or, uh, are you from the area locally? Um, tell us about that piece. Okay, um, I live an hour away from Greensboro, so I've been in Pittsburgh for most of my life. I moved to North Carolina when I was maybe a few months old, um, so I was basically just raised here in North Carolina. So we knew the area quite well. Uh, my parents don't really care about the historical side of the school they just care that I go to college so when I told them I was going to a &T, they were just fine with it I didn't really have to explain it to them or any of the differences because they know um, I can take care of myself for one thing I'm self-sustaining and if something were to happen I can take care of myself as, uh, physically as well if the you know moment were to come but um so no the transition and having to explain it to them wasn't that difficult Beautiful. Okay. How about you, Anna? Thank you, Sam. Well, I'm like, I've been here in Greensboro all my life. Um, with my parents, it wasn't, it was either UNCG or A&T. Um, I chose A&T, but they were a little worried because they were like, why don't you follow your sister to UNCG? And I was like, I want to experience something different. And seeing the difference from my happiness compared to my sister's happiness from UNCG, like they saw a difference. Like with her classes, like she never developed any family environment. But with my classes, since they're tiny, we are able to develop those family environments. Um, yeah, thank you so much um, for sharing that. So as I was listening to all of your stories and journeys towards um, 
selecting which college to attend. And um, one of the things that I heard from each of you is the sense of belonging, the sense of connection. Um, feeling like you were you had a family, feeling that you had a mom on campus that you could go to, or someone that was like a mom on campus. Um, and I think that is so important um, as, as a college student, right? That you that you do take the time to, if you can, to visit the colleges. And Christina talked about her experience and how that was really um, helped her to determine what college she was going to go to. And so you all highlighted that, and, and it's like I just love to hear that um, that. Uh, NCANT was that place for you because of that sense of belonging that you felt. Um, and so I want to, I want to, for you all to share a little bit more about the student experience um, at an HBCU. So um, Sam talked a little bit about a Latinx meet and greet. Um, what are some opportunity, what are those opportunities, uh, unique opportunities that HBC offer, um, HBCUs like ANT offers? for students um, on campus, whether it's student organizations, whether it's scholarships, um, what are those unique opportunities that, um, that you, you have seen that your college has offered? Okay, so I'm a part of two Latinx organizations at the uh, at A&T. Uh, one is called Estamos Unidos. Uh, so pretty much, you know, you're just trying to spread that knowledge of Hispanic culture around campus to those who don't know about it, since, you know, they all generalize, uh, you know, Cubans, Puerto Ricans, people from El Salvador towards Mexicans, they all think we're all one when really we have a vast, they all have a vast of different cultures and stuff. So that's an example, because I remember I met some people, not from, not from a and but from my community college, who didn't um you know know the difference or anything uh, aside from the land and so i sometimes i would explain to them that we have different cultures but basically estamos unidos is all about that so it's just to spread awareness and another one is um ship which stands for the society of hispanic professional engineers which um we're trying to get more uh, Hispanics in STEM, but it's not solely Hispanics. It's basically anybody who wants to join, minorities or, you know, uh, Caucasians. It's just for anybody who wants to join, but our main focus is getting, like, minorities into STEM. Since uh, not a lot of it, minorities actually get to graduate college or go to go to college, for that matter. Um, that's just, uh, that's just, those are just some of the few things. Um, we also have, they have a bunch of different opportunities for Hispanics, such as uh, SLI, so, you know, like, Ms. Sanchez had mentioned, uh, we are we mentor students and trying to get access to college, get into college. Uh, and so there's there are just those kinds of things that you know we can do to get more people to go to college. I'm getting lost here, but you get what so, I'm trying to say. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it seems like there are various student organizations that um, that are geared more like are geared towards Latinx students. So ship. Um, and you know, helping to provide kind of those. So when I so I went to NC State and they had a ship program there, and I was part of ship. Um, and so I'm really familiar with it. So it, it it definitely does provide those opportunities for college students to learn about different career opportunities and just really to connect with other students. And I think that um, th those student organizations they really help to make friends, um, create that sense of belonging. So thank you for sharing those two examples um, or those examples, Sam. Um, Anna or Cristina, do you have something to add to that? Uh, I do. What was what was the um, question again? I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. So um, I was asking, what is uh, what has NCANT offered? Um, what are some programs, or what do they offer that is is so unique to Latinx? And so Sam talked about the student organizations. Um, Mm -hmm. So are there other programs or opportunities like scholarships or no, say, other programs that they might offer for students? Sure. So actually, me and Sam, we are Mr. and Ms. Ms. Um, Estamos Unidos. And that is what he was talking about, the Latin organization on campus, Latin Student Alliance. So it's not just for Latin students, though, but it definitely is to, like, the purpose of it is to help, like, break the break the gap you know between the latino students and all the other all the other ethnicities on campus anyone who's interested 
So we actually, we are, we're the brand ambassadors and we also hold community service events. So for, you know, high school students who are thinking, you know, and wanting to go to HBCU and wanting to connect like more into their Latino side, we, there is many events that are held just from our organization alone. We actually do the very first uh, Hispanic Heritage Celebration and that was in September, because that's when uh, the Hispanic Heritage Month is. So we threw that. No, I'm sorry, it was in October, because it's from September 15th to October. So we had we had worked all night, and we had we had every single flag of all like every Latino country, and we had just basically had like kind of like a Latino party, and for it was welcome to everybody. And we had, I had, I had held the dance lessons. We had a pinata. We, um, we played different games. We had different like candies from different Latino countries. And just like we had also um, put a hall of fame of like some like very, like famous Latinos and what they have done and like contributed. So basically just to get more people aware and like also just for like, you know, for the Latino students who want to see more Latin culture, who want, you know, to do more. And it was a great turnout. People came, you know, we taught bachata, merengue, salsa, a little bit of cumbia, and got them familiar with those, you know, like the different dances that, you know, within our culture. And also Sly that uh, Miss Sanchez and Sam were talking about, we're also a part of that as well. And I was, I had, I had saw it on uh, the organization. There's this organization website where you can see, I forgot what it was called. And I had saw like a listing to be a mentor for Latino high school students. And I was like, and I was a freshman. I was maybe like, it was maybe in September I saw it. So it was like fall 2017. So I was like, yeah, that sounds nice because I'm first generation college student, so my brother, he's 24, I'm turning 21 next month. He's the first person in our whole entire family on both sides to graduate college. So I'm gonna be the first woman to graduate and I'm also gonna be the second to graduate college. So that I think is also a very big deal too because most of the students that we mentored are also first generation as well. And I had struggled a lot with, with college. So I knew that I wanted to make sure that future students, you know, who are Latino and who are going to college, you know, can have those resources. And we provide scholarship packets, we provide, you know, just resources and like, just like, even just somebody to talk to if, you know, like things aren't going well and like we would meet with them. Sometimes they would come to our school, they would do college tours and just really get them to, you know, look into colleges, help them with their college essays, SATs. I didn't, my, my family didn't know anything about SATs. They didn't know anything about applying to school. I had to do all the groundwork. I had to figure out everything for myself. So it, it was hard because I, all the schools that I did choose, I didn't get into. So I, you know, I was looking around for like, you know, like, okay, well now I have to, now I have to like rethink everything, you know, because I thought I was gonna get in. And the crazy part is I didn't even like those schools anyways. So I, you know, cause like I said, I did the tour. So there's, there's so much to be offering. And for any high school student who is, you know, very interested, you know, in a and and wanting to go to HBCU, I just wanna let you know, like you don't have to be black to go to HBCU because you're gonna get that. I, I've gotten that, like, you know, I, I, and I'm just being honest, like, you're not black why are you going there people you know and then you're gonna have people you will have people who are gonna ask you like what made you come here and you know what I mean you know they're you know why they're asking that you know and so but it's really just having a good positive mentality because on it on it because I'm telling you it is a great experience going to an HBCU anything is what you make of it so there is resources the multicultural center and you know, someday it could be you as the Mrs. or the Mr. Estamos or even president, you know, and having even more organizations and trying to get more, more events on campus. 
Oh yeah. By the way, thanks for those two hours of sleep when we were setting up that celebration. <laughs> I had, to open yeah. the next, I had to open the next morning, which was two hours later. It was. We were in there. <laughs> but it was worth it. It was. Yeah, we really were there worth until it. like, we were there we setting were there up like until six, like three hours. in the morning. And I had to wake, and I had to get ready to go to work at like five. So it was, <laughs> I had to. They set up look wonderful. I, I got yeah. to sell it the next day. I, Everything. I forgot I got any sleep thanks to her, but it was worth it, you know. It was a beautiful event and we could provide pictures uh, afterwards if you guys would like to see those for any like parents or, you know, future college students and you guys want to see what we're about, we can provide those as well. Awesome. Yeah, Christina, you, you got me sold. Like, I just, you know, hearing you talk, I hear the passion. I can, I, I can tell that, that going to an HBCU, going to NCANT, that, that, like you said, that has been one of the best decisions that you've made. And I, I can see that, that it has been a great and wonderful experience for you. Um, so thank you so much for sharing mm -hmm. that with us. Um, would you like, to, do you have anything to add to that? Or Manuela? I'll let Anna go first and then I'll just chime in after. I feel like my peers have um, touched on everything. <laughs> everything? Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a little bit touching based on what they're uh, what they said. So basically, there's those student organizations that we do have on campus that kind of target our Latino students, but you know, also the Multicultural Student Center is a place that offers that uh, welcoming environment to not only to Latino students but to all students. You know, so then it is a place where you know, just like Sam said. Uh, he started going and then he found his place there where he made other friendships with other students there. It's a place where they can go and, you know, Anna has been there where she's doing homework or they're having a uh, group meeting. So it's a, it's, it's a space that we provide uh, to, ma to make our students feel welcome. Also, you know, we, Christina touched on it, um, for Hispanic Heritage Month, you know, we do have programs where we have programs that, uh, you know, have that in mind of what students want. So basically we touch base with Estamos Unidos and with other students to say, hey, Hispanic Heritage Month is coming up. What kind of program would you like to see? What, you know, so keeping always students in mind, uh, that way they can feel included. And that's what, that's what uh, we're looking for uh, at the end of the day. Um, making those experiences where our students feel included and they feel at home and they feel feel good and they feel some mothering. I'm like, oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, and you know, just, just kind of being aware of our students and, and where they're at and how we can help them. I know also that um, um, a and is making really good strides at, you know, connecting more with our with our Latino students. Uh, we recently sent out a survey uh, for the Office of uh, Student Orgs where they're looking into bring fraternities and sororities, uh, Latino fraternities or Latino sororities in camp on campus. And they were gonna, um, they sent out a survey, I believe that's what we were sending out to students to kind of get an idea of what they're what they're wanting on campus. So we're really open, opening things up more uh, to to get that inclusion on campus. That's wonderful, uh, Manuela. I did have a, a follow up question to that. Does um, a and offer any scholarships specific to Latinx students that are uh, coming to study uh, institution? So our office does have a booklet and it's also in our website that offer it's multicultural. So you might find one there that's specifically geared to Latino students, but uh, just because we're multicultural, we kind of kind of try to get it um, okay. right. Uh, so, but I believe if um, directly from the university, there's not one that is specific to Latino students. It's just kind of open to all students. Um, but we do offer resources where students can find those specific um, scholarships open to Latino students. Well, that's wonderful to know that um, the university offers scholarship opportunity, opportunities to all students or um, just the different students on campus. Right. And I love, um, I love how you mentioned the clubs 
and and I'm thinking that probably students have the flexibility if they feel inclined to create yes. their own club that they can certainly do that um, highlighting the beautiful culture that we have. So I love that that a smaller school that you're able to do to do things like that. Um, one of the things that we like to do in the cafecitos, um, guys, is to share one consejito, or you can even do two consejitos um, with our students. It can be for a student, it can be for a, a parent, it can also be for a counselor. So if you had to look back, right? You, mm -hmm. You've been to, through these experiences, but if you had to look back, what would you wish someone have, would have tell you before? Um, it, it could be about college in general. It could be about being an HBCU specifically. Uh, what would you wish somebody would have tell you before? Um, I'll go ahead and start because I see they're, they're all having their thinking heads. Yes. <laughs> they're thinking. So for me and my experience with Sly, I see that those school tours really do help uh, because in the slide program, we usually do about one or two school tours per semester. And it really gives them that perspective of like, wow, like, okay, I know this is a PWI. I know this is an HBCU, but I also want to see what type of diversity is walking around campus. And those are some of the things that are, that really, you know, kind of like stick out to our students. Uh, so I would recommend uh, for all seniors, high school seniors, and their parents, you know, visit different colleges and universities, see what they're offering, but do that guided tour because that gives you a good experience, not just doing it online. And Christina really mentioned it, you know, she, she, she for her own experience too, it was the same thing. It was different from what she saw online than when what she actually visited the campuses that she got that different vibe. So it's, I would recommend this mi consejito for all parents and um, for all those uh, seniors, go and visit those universities if you're able to, that you're interested. One that I could say is, I mean, this is for basically anything, college, um, ways to get involved in college, or just applying to college, I, I would just say, even if you're scared or worried you're not going to make it or you're not going to do great, don't let that get in the way. Just go for it or because you never know if you'll make it or not. And one thing I learned being here is you won't make any progress if you stay in your comfort zone for being too scared. So I would go that extra mile and just give it a shot. so glad you brought that up Sam because I saw that in him he was when we met him that first Latinx meet and greet he was like all the way in the back just kind of like looking at everybody being shy and only towards the end of the event you know that I kind of like approached him and said hey and everything is when you know I invited him to come to the center and that's when he started to develop those like kind of like okay I'm gonna push myself I'm gonna push myself and then he was never a hugger now he's a, a little bit of a hugger. Now he's a little bit of a hugger. It's a, it's a in there. So, but, but I want to congratulate him because, yeah, he did kind of push himself out of his comfort zone for many things, you know, and also when he, when he became a mentor as well, you know, so good. But now he's good. helping other students. To do right, good work. consejito, good consejito to push Yeah, like those mentees, they're like my daughters. I, I care about them. Oh. <laughs> also, also about the Multicultural Student Center, if you're too scared to do anything there, just let me tell you this. Um, that is a great place to take a nap. <laughs> I'm always napping in there. <laughs> we, we have comfortable uh, seats, yeah. So he does take his nap in between classes. <laughs> That's so wonderful because just hearing you say that it's a it's a space where you feel safe and comfortable to go and take a nap so it, it's just it's wonderful that you're sharing that <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Anna, but how about for you or christina any consejito that you may have or you can even think of it as your younger self like what do you wish you would have told your younger self
Um, okay, so I would say like for my younger self, for the parents, you know, who are who have children who are thinking about going to HBCU and, and even even students who are thinking about going to HBCU. I would one thing, regardless of wherever college you go, college is not easy. And you you're gonna face a lot of adversity and you know, there you know, you're gonna spend nights working on things. You know, I thought I thought coming into college, I like I said, I didn't know anything about college. None of no one in my family ever went to school. I didn't think like how hard could it be? Like it's just school, right? Like I went to high school, middle school, elementary school, but I definitely, you know, with like coursework and everything, it was definitely a lot. But I would say just follow your heart like go where makes you happy so if a pwi is gonna make you happy if you feel as though in your heart that that that's where you want to go and you feel like it's going to you're going to get the best experience out of that go for it if you feel as though that you believe truly in your heart like hbcu are going to get the best experience because like for my for parents i want to let you, like i wanted to say like i want i want you guys to think that you know you you gave the best tools and knowledge to your children, like for them to go and do what they gotta do in college and just have that, just have that faith and trust in them that, you know, that the decision that they made and if they feel really confident, like, you know, give them that chance. Cause I know there's a lot of parents who are just like, absolutely not, like you're not going or whatever school you're not even, you know, there's a lot of parents who wouldn't even have let their children even go out of state. No, you're going to community college and that's it. You know, so let, let your children, if they really feel as though they can do it in their heart, believe in yourselves as parents that you gave them all the best tools and knowledge and, you know, you, you know, you raised them. So, you know, like that everything that they had learned growing up as a child that they will, you know, use and everything that you had taught them, they will use as they find themselves. Because I definitely I'm still like maturing. I'm still growing. I'm still a young, you know, I'm still a young woman. I just turned 18 when I very first left the house. And I, I actually it hasn't even been a month since I left the house, like a month since I had turned 18. So I was really a baby you know, going out and I look back, I really look back on my experience. I'm like, wow, I had no idea I was in for that ride. But, you know, everything that I had learned growing up, everything that I was taught, you know, I, I started to see a lot of things that my parents had always told me. And I'm like, oh, wow. So, you know, you know, because, you know, as a kid, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you don't want to hear it. But it, it really does start to come true, like when you get older and, and all the knowledge that they tell you and, you know, what to look out for and just, you know, just different mannerisms, because not everybody is raised the same. But, you know, as long as you put your best foot forward and you continue to work hard and, you know, just your main goal is to be happy there. You you don't want to be at a school where you're not happy. And, you know, because they're taking your money. You want to go to a school where you're like, wow, that was worth every single cent that I had paid. And that's exactly how I feel. I, I take out student loans. And that's another thing. Don't feel bad if you have to take out a student loan because that bought me the best blessing in my life. So you know what? Even though I have to pay that off, that's fine. Because a lot of people aren't even aware that you can get a loan. So people can't even go to school. I wouldn't have been able to go to school if I didn't take out a loan. Whether even if I stayed in Jersey, I still would have had to take out a loan to go to school. So just do it, you know, you can't take money with you when you die. Go ahead, wherever you go, just make sure that you're happy and this is where you want to be. So I would say that's my best advice. Thank you, Christina. That's such a thoughtful advice. And um, I'm really proud of you guys' um, experiences. Thank you for sharing those with us. Is there anything that we have not talked about? Um, anything? Well, I have one more consejito. If, go uh, ahead. Mind. And Anna too. Mm -hmm. um, so... Another thing is, obviously, there are some, a lot of uh, Latinx parents who do this, but um, if you're a child who gets compared to a certain family member a lot due to their um, achievements, such as, you know, going to a better school or, like, getting a, a better paying job, don't really let that get to you. Because mm. in the end, you're not your cousin or uncle or whatever. You're, you're you. And you got to make the 
you got to make the progress of what you want to do, not what your parents expect you to be or who your parents expect you to be. Because I know from personal experience, my cousin, one of my cousins went to a very, very good school. You know, he set the bar really high. He made a bunch of achievements and I was compared to him a few times, but, uh, and I did let it get to me. So there were some times where um, you're going to feel down. So I would just say, don't let it get to you and just try to work as hard as you can to be acknowledged for your achievements, not be compared to somebody else's. That's a beautiful advice. Thank you so much. Anna, any last words? Yes. Um, like Christina said, I would say follow your heart. Don't worry where your friends, your partner, your siblings have went like to college because people do change and they grow. So, I mean, you're going to meet new people in college. Right. And you, you know, you met people studying abroad too. Yes. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about how, how it was as a Latina studying abroad, your experience? Um, I went to Sevilla, Spain. Um, I was a little nervous because I mean, it is a different culture, but I was able to meet my roommate who I stayed there with and um, people at school also, like we weren't able to have classes with those who are living in Spain, but we were able to take courses with different um, like groups of students. And so you met a lot, a lot of people. That's so wonderful. Um, I, I am so happy to hear that each of you guys kind of made the best out of your time in college. Um, I'm so glad that we can see the different sides of the struggles, but the success that we can see about this ambiguity in terms of like having the same issues that regardless of what school you go to, you're going to have that fear. You may have, um, you know, trying to figure out how to, how to pay for college. Like Christina, I also had to use student loans to pay for college. And, 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 and what Sam said about, it's really what you make up to about your experience. So I, I appreciate so much um, what you guys have shared. I am so excited for you guys kind of finishing and, and seeing what you end up doing and utilizing all this wonderful um, experiences to help others. Um, uh, Manuela, is there anything um, else that we did not cover about an HBCU that you would like for us to highlight here? Um, I, I'm hoping that, that this resource is really helpful for students and parents um, when they're thinking about an HBCU and, and can see um, an example, right? An example of your institution as a starting point. Um, every institution is so different, but at least we can give them a little glimpse of what they might expect. So anything else that we have not talked today that you think is it really important that we do uh, mention? Aggie Pride. <laughs> Okay. Yes, Abby Pride. Uh, that, that's one of the things also from uh, our university, our children, our children hall, our students, you know, hold that pride of being part of the university because I, I, I guess, you know, once you're in it, you start getting the culture, you start understanding it, you you become part of it. And, you know, they do, well, we do have uh, one of the largest homecoming, as we are called the largest homecoming on earth. So uh, you can see that Aggie pride in our students, and that is something that also kind of brings them like that family sense. Um, I love yeah. that. Yes. I hope, you, I hope we get invited because we want to document it, right, Juana? Oh, yeah, yeah, that would be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's they don't change hopefully. anything due to if COVID is still around. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so yeah, I will sure make make an effort to to try to um to see if something happens this year to reach out to both of you and 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 have you over so you can experience what Aggie Pride is during homecoming. <laughs> it's really that would be wonderful. <laughs> Manuela, what's a good way to, for students that are interested in um, NCA and T State University that they can find more information? What's, what's a good starting place for them? 
So a good starting place is always, you know, visit our website and visit the admissions section so that you can get information about what the admissions process is, you know, with A&T. Um, I'm happy to share my contact information with you so that you can share it as well. If anybody wants to contact me and reach out to me just because they can feel that, you know, well, she's Latina, maybe she can, or the fact that I can speak Spanish if it's a parent and they want, you know, they want somebody that speaks Spanish um, and can give them more information about the university. I'm oh, certainly uh, more than welcome and, you know, open to, to, to talk to folks about it uh, and to students too, you know, in general, just to, to give them that sense that, you know, we are, we have an open door for, for our students. So I, I would definitely recommend first going through admissions, but if they have any just specific questions about, you know, I'm a Latina and then uh, what can I find on campus? Like, what is it? Like, you know, how many Latino students are there? Like, I'm interested in this career, but you know, just, anything I'm I'm pretty much open so you know um, I'd like I can share my contact information as well we certainly will share it uh, my colleague Juana is, did we leave anything out is there anything you would like to add before we close this um, I just I just want to say thank you um, I uh, am very just inspired by, by your stories um, and I, I just love to hear I just love to hear people's journeys um, and so thank you so much for taking the time to share your personal stories, your journeys and opening to us. Um, and so as you were saying, uh, Juanes, I really hope that this is a resource that students and, and parents can use. Um, and um, I mean, just listening to you all, like I just learned about a lot of the opportunities, the sense of belonging, um, the connection with the professors and how you felt like, you know, you do have that connection um at your university and i think that is really really important um so thank you so much for your time um uh, for having this cafecito virtual with us and I'm, I'm sure that um i'm sure that maybe hopefully students will start reaching out and asking questions about hbcus or ncaint um pero muchísimas gracias yes thank you for the invitation uh juanes and juana and thank you, Anna, Christina, and Sam, for being part of this. I really appreciate that uh, that you were available and you know very willing to like. Yes, I can do it. Yes, <laughs> I loved it. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Ya sabemos que Aggie Pride también habla español, verdad? Entonces. Yes, Aggie Pride. <laughs> <laughs> ya saben, ya saben. Bueno, chicos, cuídense mucho. Hasta luego y gracias. Bye. Thank Adiós. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.